Hello, uh, today in this uh, hopefully short video I'd like to talk a little bit more about Earth's energy balance covering some comments uh, in response to the discussion space and, and um, probably a few more details about some of the stuff that seems a bit confusing. In the big picture there's been a couple of questions about you know why are we learning about this or that, that hasn't been directed that direct question um, but I just want to emphasize that what we're doing here is looking at kind of the big scale picture of Earth's energy system or energy balance and then um, hopefully that will provide us a platform to understand the smaller scale features of weather so I hope that works so it seems like there's been some confusion about wavelength and frequency so I'm hoping that this diagram might help so very schematic model okay here are uh, and it's meant to mimic that fact that blues are shorter wavelength and reds are longer wavelength in terms of visible light so short wavelength waves are ones that have the crests or the troughs the bottom that are close together so they're scrunched together and these also have a high frequency meaning that if you stood here and watched these go by they would go by very quickly now as we move up in wavelength the spacing between the crests or the troughs gets wider so that's a long wavelength and these have lower frequency now coupled with this low frequency and long wavelength and short wavelength and high frequency we can look at the energy so long wavelength uh, radiation have lower energy short have higher energy and we can look at that helps us understand that so energy which is measured in joules in this case equals a constant Planck's constant times the frequency now the frequency is also equal to the velocity divided by the wavelength okay so this is the velocity of light for our purposes so energy equals speed of light times a constant divided by a wavelength so as the wavelength gets longer the energy goes down so this is a model or a schematic of the types of waves that are emitted from the Sun as part of the electromagnetic spectrum so we have very high energy short wavelength parts of the spectrum gamma rays and x-rays okay uh, there's and so the sun emits both of these now there's a lot of research going on now about gamma rays um, because this is a interesting area and there's actually a very small window of material excuse me of radiation of this spectrum that reaches the earth and that includes some ultraviolet radiation which is higher energy and infrared radiation and then this narrow range of visible light which has the following uh, spectrum Roy G Biv okay and then longer wavelength microwaves and radio waves okay so there's only a real small part of the electromagnetic spectrum that's put out from the Sun that heats or comes and, and reaches the earth now I really have to emphasize that this is the only energy source for the earth um, but what keeps our temperature and controls our weather and climate it, are the processes that occur within the atmosphere if we didn't have our atmosphere um, all of this energy would be released to space and our planet would be very cold and um, check out one of the posts on the discussion space about um, a comparison with the moon okay so I found this image from a NASA website I thought was very interesting so here's the atmosphere layers tropo strato meso thermosphere and here is the different wavelengths of light uh, shown in some nice colors short high energy long lower energy okay so a lot of the high energy potentially very dangerous radiation or parts of the electromagnetic spectrum from the Sun are interrupted in the atmosphere so they don't reach the surface which is a good thing and this is where the ozone process comes in if the ozone layer wasn't here then a lot of this uh, ultraviolet radiation would make it and other radiation would make it to the surface so notice that there's a very small window here of energy 
that reaches the Earth's surface. Some ultraviolet, the visible, a little infrared. Okay, and then the rest of it, there's a, uh, a blockage of the higher infrared, and then the radio waves come in, and longer wavelengths are also blocked. So, once again, the sun does supply the energy to the Earth's surface, but to maintain our atmosphere within the troposphere, maintain the weather, then that's what happens in terms of the balance in the energy. Very simple diagram. Short wavelength radiation, some long wave, some infrared, comes in from sunlight, strikes the Earth. Now the Earth gets warm, but it doesn't get so warm to re-emit short wavelength radiation. It gets warm enough so that it'll re-emit long wave radiation. Now if we didn't have an atmosphere, then that long wave radiation would escape right to space, and some of it does through these windows. But since we have an atmosphere with these greenhouse gases and the greenhouse effect, is a good thing um, but since we have these gases like co2 water vapor methane cfc's etc they absorb some of the infrared radiation and re-emit that back to earth's surface in the form of heat and that's what keeps our atmosphere uh, warm and our planet habitable so i hope this clears up some stuff and uh, i've enjoyed the discussion and i hope you're all well here are some references i used Thank you.